And it's Mike from Woolybug and Darren from Piscator Flies. Hey guys, this is Mike from Woolybug. Today, Darren will be showing you how to tie a gold ribbed hare's ear nymph. There are many types of hare's ear patterns, and this is my favorite one. The hare's ear pattern mimics many different types of aquatic insects and crustaceans, including mayfly nymphs, caddis larvae, scuds. In fact, it can imitate almost any freshwater nymph. This versatile pattern can be fished in many ways, but I like to dead drift it as a dropper nymph and a two nymph setup under an indicator. It is quite possible I've caught more trout on the hare's ear nymph than any other nymph in my fly box. At the end of this video, you can tap or click a link to watch me successfully fish this pattern on the Elkhorn Creek in West Virginia. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this pattern, and Darren will show you how. Get a fresh hook in the vise. Today we're going to be using a Mustad S82-3906 and I've got a gold brass bead on here. You can use any kind of nymph hook. I really like the 3906. It's sort of a 2XL. And for thread I'm using a 70 denier ultra thread in rusty brand. So we'll just start the thread behind the bead and then we're going to wrap it down to the point. Trim off the extra tag end there. So for the tail, you have a bunch of different options. This is a red squirrel tail. And you can kind of see it's got different uh, sort of guard hairs in here. These ones near the base of the tail, they've got a lot of natural bugginess to them. They've got some different colors there. So we're going to snip a patch from there. The hairs from, like the red hairs from higher up, they're pretty monotone and they, they'll work great, but they don't produce quite as nice a finished fly. So we're going to take the under fur out of there. I'm going to save that for some dubbing later on. And we're just going to keep those guard hairs together. I'm going to measure it about the hook shank length. Don't need them too, too long. And we'll just bind those down on top of the hook. Next, we're going to take a length of uh, Uni French oval tinsel. And this is the small gold. And typically, you just want to size this to the size of fly. If you're tying the really small ones, you can get the extra small. If you're tying them a little larger, you can get a medium or a large oval tinsel. Because it's a gold ribbed, you want it to be somewhat prominent. Um, if you don't have oval tinsel, you can also use a really fine uh, flat tinsel. It works as well. So we just bound that in on this side of the hook shank. Now we need to add a little bit of dubbing here. So I've got a hair's mask, and as you can see, there's a variety of different colors of hair there. You've got anything from really light stuff here, which we're going to use for the body here, to darker stuff. So this is from the cheek, and this is fairly light, light colored and fluffy. So we're just going to take a little bit of this at a time, and we're just going to dub that onto our thread. And it doesn't hurt to mix that up a little bit. Coming straight off the mask, it can be a little uniform. And we're going to take a little bit of that hair at the end of fur that we pulled off the tail section. We're just going to mix that in and just going to blend that in hand. So you just want to basically mix those fibers up a little bit so they're a little more distributed. Of course, you can do this ahead of time if you wish. So for the body on the hairs here, we're going to keep it fairly thin. And we're just going to dub that thin noodle onto the thread. And uh, maybe just a touch more there. And we want to dub the back 
two thirds of the hook. And we want to, I like to keep that fairly uniform in size, just with a, maybe a slight taper towards the front there. That looks pretty good. Now we'll wind the oval tinsel forward, give a few turns just to show some segmentation in there. You can see the really nice contrast with this light fur and the gold oval tinsel. So we'll lock that in place with a few turns. And we'll snip that off. So next we're going to tie in a shell back for the fly. We've got a number of different options we can use. You can go the traditional route and use something like a turkey flat or a turkey wing. It's got a nice bit of natural barring in there where you can take a ring neck pheasant tail which is also nice it gives you a little bit of a darker option you can go a little bit modern use some scud back and that's what we're going to use today so I've got some olive scud back here and I, I like to use this just because it it's a little bit easier to work with I guess if you're doing quite a bit we just want to make sure that we tie that straight on the back of the fly. Just want to make sure you check that before you commit it. And then next we're going to look for a little bit of a darker dubbing. So you can see there on the ears and on the forehead you've got a darker mix. So we're just going to take a small cutting from there. Of course, it's got lighter under fur, but it's uh, overall it's a little bit darker. So we'll pull that out. And you've got some really beautiful spiky guard hairs in here as well, and uh, those really play into the bugginess of the fly, especially in the thorax. It's nice to have a little bit buggier, a little bit fuller thorax for the gold ribbed hairs here. So we'll just dub a little bit of the hairs mask that we just cut off. Of course, if you don't have a hairs mask and you do have access to just regular rabbit dubbing, I'd recommend just grabbing a couple different colors. So uh, natural if you can, or just like a, a darker color for the thorax and lighter for the body. We'll just spin a little bit more dubbing on there. You can kind of already see how spiky that is. And I like to make my thorax fairly full on these flies. Just add a little bit more perhaps here. And if you want, you can actually take the hairs mask and do a proper mixing of it with uh, some carding tools before you tie it in. It gives it a little bit more consistency. Just added a half hitch there. Now I'm going to push all the dubbing down as I pull over the scud back. I'm going to add a couple loose wraps there just to kind of get it in place, make sure we've got it where we want it. And then we're gonna continue with some snugger tie-in wraps with our thread. I'm gonna cut the excess scud back. I like to leave just a tiny little tag there, just because of the stretchiness, it can actually pull back if you are if you got a little bit too much tension. I'm gonna add a whip finish. And we'll put in a second whip finish just to make sure that thing is secure. We'll trim away our thread. Now you've got a great finished fly here, but we're going to take this another step forward. We're going to use a little bit of Solaris. This is the thin formula. And I'm just going to put that over top of the th finishing thread wraps and uh, just on top of the shell back. That's Definitely optional, but it'll help with the durability of your fly a little bit. 
And just zap that with the UV light. Make sure that's cured. You see how buggy the uh, thorax is. We're gonna help that out just a little bit more. We've got a little Velcro tool. We're just gonna push that out just a little bit. And there you go. That's a gold ribbed hare's ear. Hey Tires, thanks for checking out our video. Please take a minute and check out Mike's excellent on the water vlogs over at the Wooly Bugs YouTube channel. I've got some links in the description that you can follow. If you enjoyed the video and want to show a bit of support for what we're doing here, why not give it a thumbs up? Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updated on the latest fly patterns, books and reviews. If you have any questions or comment, leave a message below. We make sure to answer each and every one. Until next time, this is Darren saying keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.